The spinners are located in bay 4 and 5 inside the Quattro Nanofab. To use them, you will need to complete the training for them, and reserve the spinner in the iris system. The spinners can spin a variety of sample sizes. Make sure to reserve the appropriate spinner for your sample size and resist. These are also listed in iris. Later in this video, we will demonstrate how to do them correctly, but please note that these steps are very, very critical to running the spinners. First, you must select the correct size chuck. If you use a chuck that's too large for your sample, you'll get resist down the vacuum line of the spinner. This will clog the vacuum line with resist and eventually break the spinner. Second, you must put the chuck on the spindle correctly. If you don't, you'll destroy the insert inside of the spinner chuck and the vacuum to your sample will fail. Put on a second pair of gloves. You'll more than likely get some resist on your hands. Put on your face shield. Don't forget to spray it down. Because the resist will make a mess, use aluminum foil to protect the spinner. Fold the foil into quarters and rip a small quarter section from the foil. There should be a hole in the center of the foil. Place the foil into the spinner bowl. If you're using a new vial, print a label with your name, today's date, and which material you're putting into the vial. New vials may be purchased from the QNF stockroom. If your vial is new or your supply is low, you may refill it using the resist stored in the cabinet. Use acetone on a wipe to clean the threads on your resist vial and the resist supply. This will go a long way to help keep your supply and the master supply of resist clean and particle free. If your resist is free of particles, your resist spins will come out much cleaner and your lithography will be much more likely to work as you intend without having to strip your resist and start over. Warning, this next section of the training is the most important part of the training. If the procedure here is not followed correctly, you will damage the spinner and the spinner chucks for everyone, including you. You must pick the correct size chuck for your sample. If the chuck is too big for your sample, some of your resist will get onto the back side of your sample, down the vacuum line, and clog the vacuum line as well as the spinner motor. If the chuck is too small, the vacuum may not hold the sample well. If you aren't sure if the chuck is too small for the sample, you can try running a test spin with your sample and make sure that the vacuum holds. Let's look at an example of how to pick the right size chuck. This chuck is too large for this sample. Although it may look okay at first, resist will get onto the back side of the sample and down the vacuum line. On the other hand, this sample and chuck are the right size for each other. If you are not sure whether the chuck is big enough, again, try running a test spin with no resist before you run the real spin. And here's another example where the chuck is the right size. Here's another example where the chuck is too big for the sample. The chuck must also be put on correctly. Otherwise, the insert will get shaved down and will become unusable. Put the chuck on correctly. Rotate the spindle so that the flat faces you. Flip over the chuck and point the flat away from you. 
Carefully flip the chuck over and put it on the spindle. Put the sample onto the chuck and center it. Press the return key to put the controller into edit mode. Edit the spin speed that you'd like to run and press enter again. Press the arrow button to go over, press enter to put it into edit mode, and enter the time. And you can do this for the other subsequent spin steps in your process. Press F2 to turn on the vacuum. Get out a wipe and pipette. Squeeze the pipette first, and then draw up the resist. Drop the first two or three drops into the bowl. and dispense the resist onto your sample. If you have any bubbles, you can suck those up. If you're going to use the pipette again, lay it down on the wipes and close the lid on your resist. Cover the bowl for your safety. Stomp the pedal to start the spin. For safety, the spinner has a timer that will wait 17 seconds before it releases vacuum to your sample. Once it reaches zero and the vacuum turns off, you can take your sample off the chuck and bake it. If this is the last sample that you'll spin with this resist, throw out the pipette in the trash at the bench. Please do not pour unused resist down the cup sink. This will clog the cup sink. If you'd like to dispose of your vial and or leftover resist, please put it in the back of the bench. Staff will collect and clean the vial accordingly. Take out the chuck, remove and throw away the aluminum foil, and clean out the spinner bowl with a dry wipe and then an acetone soaked wipe. This work was performed at the Singh Center for Nanotechnology at the University of Pennsylvania, a member of the National Nanotechnology Coordinated Infrastructure NNCI, network, which is supported by the National Science Foundation. Thank you.